Welcome guys, today you're about to witness pure insanity, the title doesn't lie. The guy with the white pieces here managed to play with 100% accuracy while sacrificing pretty much everything just to let that sink in. Now this guy was none other than Rashid Nesmetdinov, he was one of the top players in the 50s and he was known for his brilliant games like this one. Now, just for you to realize how much of a genius he was, in 1949 he was just chilling, spectating the Russian National Championship of Checkers, and all of a sudden a player was missing. And he was like, okay, I guess I can play for him, even though he didn't play Checkers in over 15 years. And guess what happened? He won every game <laughs> what the hell is this he got qualified for the finals and he came out in second place but still like he didn't play checkers come on but okay i'm getting a little bit off topic so let's just get into the game like i said he had the white pieces here he was playing a guy called luzico and the game started with d4 now luzico replied with knight f6 we have c4 g6 knight c3 and after d5 we have the so-called grunfeld defense now for the inexperienced eye, it looks like after a trade, white can simply play e4, and after the horses are traded, the pawn takes, white has a pretty solid center. However, uh, black still has some tools to, to just uh, undermine it, like c5 or bishop g7, and that's exactly what black starts by doing. Here Luzico plays e5, and now that this pawn has been pushed, Rashid uses this to play bishop b5. Now here, Luzico can block pretty much every way, knight c6, knight d7, even bishop d7 opposing the bishop, but he retries knight c6. The point is that at first sight it, this looks crazy, I mean, you're stepping in a pin and you're pretty much asking for d5. This attacks the pin piece the knight can't leave, however Luzical can simply kick the bishop whenever he wants, for example a6, bishop has to move, keeping the pin, but then simply b5 and yeah, now there's no longer a pin and the knight will be able to move. However, after d5, Luzical was, uh, was feeling a little bit creative and he decided to try to invent something new. And here he played queen a5 with a very interesting idea. Basically, he's forking the bishop and he's forking this pawn, which in turn would fork the king and the rook. So this is like a four exception. And the thing is, he, maybe he was expecting something like a trade and then uh, Nesmet Dinov to defend this pawn. However, Nesmatinov isn't really a guy to defend. And in this position, there's actually a move that's significantly better than the other. So if you want, you can try to get creative as well and uh, yeah, try to find with what a legendary attacker played in this position. Now, Nesmatinov here literally doesn't care about this pawn. Here in this position, he played queen a4. And his idea here, it, this is just the beginning of, a, of an unbelievable brilliance, really. Because if the queen is taken, now the bishop takes and uh, yeah, now this pin is a problem because you're no longer in time to kick the bishop and you're just going to win a queen piece. So instead, you've, you've kind of committed now. You kind of have to go for this pawn, right? Now this position looks horrible for white. I mean, you're just going to lose a rook. I mean, if, if you move your king somewhere, uh, you just take the rook and you're hitting the bishop. Even if you go with the king the other way, you take the rook and this bishop is coming here. And you cannot really defend with the bishop because the rook is falling with check. So, if you exclude all the possibilities, this looks insane. But here Nesmet Dinov plays king e2. <laughs> and the king is, is attacked and okay, he just charges forward. Like, nothing is happening. But the thing is, if you take a look, there's no knight checks. So, there's no checks at all. And, for example, if black takes the rook, all of a sudden he's in trouble. If you, you can take the pawn, it isn't really a good idea to take because... Then you unleash uh, all of white's troops here. So the king should run. Otherwise, if he plays a random move, this pawn here comes with a devastating check. So if the, the king should try to run, but now knight f3. And uh, yeah, it's just over. You'll just bring your rook. You'll just bring your bishop. And for example, if, if the king tries to run, you can already play bishop f4 and win the queen. So yeah, black would just be completely toast if the rook was to be taken after this amazing king e2. But don't worry, because the fireworks are just starting. So instead of queen takes rook here, Rusikal also decided to get creative, and here he played bishop d7, also sacrificing a piece. Now this move is very interesting, because it breaks the pin, 
And okay, now it seems like White can just gain a piece, and that is true. But he claims that he will just try to bring the rook as fast as he can to the open file and try to turn things around and start attacking the vulnerable White King. Makes a lot of sense. Now Rashid takes the knight, he accepts the challenge. Luzikal takes with the pawn, you have Bishop takes pawn, and now rook d8, bringing the rook to the file. For example, if uh, bishop takes bishop, rook takes, and all of a sudden queen d3 is basically unstoppable. And this is most likely going to be a draw, as white doesn't really have the forces or coordination to stop black's attack. So instead, there's only one single move. As you can see, only one single move that guarantees the advantage for white here. So if you want, you can pause the video. This is pretty much the first real brilliance of this game by Rashid. So if you want, you can try to pause the video and have a crack at it. When I looked at this game for the first time, I thought, okay, just knight f3. And after black plays a random move, it doesn't really matter. You have the idea of taking the bishop and after the rook retakes, you can bring your own. And yeah, black can't really defend his rook. For example, he can't castle. And after queen takes rook, you can take your rook here in the corner. But you have two pieces for the rook, and after you put your king to safety, you're gonna have a pretty comfortable game. So I thought, yeah, this game is amazing, but I've seen better, honestly. However, this doesn't work, because knight f3 doesn't work due to a ridiculous move, a ridiculous counter tactic by black. And that counter tactic, my friends, is queen d3. Queen d3, <laughs> sacrificing the queen. Because. Yeah, the king the king has to go back. For example, if you take the queen, bishop takes c6, and uh, yeah, this comes with the check, and you're just going to lose the game. And after the queen here, then simply bishop g7, and you're no longer in time to play the maneuver with, uh, with rook to d1. And uh, this is going to be very difficult for white to maneuver. So in the game, instead, the move you have to find is the brilliant queen to b3. Queen to b3, my friends. This, this is absolutely insane. You're in the middle of an attack and you decide to trade queens and still you insist on black taking the rook. What is happening? Well, first things first, if you try to, to exchange queens, this would be Rashid's dream. Because here you can simply trade the bishops and then take the queen. And if you count the pieces, Rashid would just be a piece up. So instead of this, well, black doesn't really have any better move. He's just too far into this. He has to take the rook. So what does white even have here? Well, let's see. Because everything here is pretty much forcing. Rashid here plays bishop to b2. And okay, it seems like he is forking the queen and the, and the rook, right? And if you count the squares here, basically the, the only available square is uh, is this square you run b1. So queen to b1 has to be played. But now, at the end, there's only one and only one move. That assures white the win. And it's not bishop takes rook. If you take the rook here on the corner, a queen trade is coming. You have to give up this bishop. Rook takes. You take the queen. And after f6, well, the bishop here is just enclosed. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much going to have a knight versus a bishop after this bishop falls. So, okay, maybe white has a slight advantage, but, but it will still be a pretty fair game. So instead of this, there's a way cleaner way to win after queen to b1. So again, you can pause, but the title has kind of spoiled it away. Here, you have to sacrifice your other rook and play knight of three. And this is, this is just amazing. But if you take a look, the queen literally has no squares. The rook has taken the final square. So, so the queen doesn't really have any better option than to take the rook. But now the onslaught begins 95 and checkmate is threatened. And there's not really any good way to defend checkmate. This also puts some pressure here on the bishop. So e6 is played, just trying to defend checkmate. But this allows a pretty forcing sequence to begin. First off, the bishops are exchanged. And now if you take uh, if you take this rook um, with the knight, all of a sudden there's no fuel to continue the attack. So Rashid has to try something else. He tries checking with the queen. If the king goes up, this would be a tragic checkmate. Knight c6 and look at the brutality. The queen restraining the king from going back. Restraining the diagonal, the bishop here. This is just... Oh my god. This, this is just brutal. So the king doesn't go up. Instead, the rook has to go back blocking. But now the queen checks from the other side. And the idea is clear. If the rook blocks, this is just checkmate. So 
king has to go up. But now the queen checks from here and the, the rook can't walk due to the knight. So he has to go inside of the sniper back here on b2. But now this allows the queen to get in. We have queen takes on f7 and the king has to march forward. And, and if you take a look, black is up 7 points of material. But these pieces can't do anything but watch the king get brutally murdered here. Now Rashid has to continue the attack. He plays knight f3 checking the king. And the king doesn't really have a lot of uh, squares he can go through. For example, if the king goes here, queen f4, the bishop restrains the king from running away. g5 would have to be played and queen takes. So instead, uh, the king tries running away to h5. And again, there's only a single way to continue the attack. This pawn here has to go forward, just exposing the black king. The king is kind of forced to take it. If um, if the king goes back, it's it's the same story, right? So uh, the king has to take it. But now queen takes this pawn here. And if we count the squares the king can go to, again, it's not looking very pleasant. If the king goes here, uh, queen h3 is actually a checkmate because of the knight, right? And if the king tries to run away to f4, which is what happened in the game, there's many ways to roam here. For example, queen f6, and after the king takes this pawn, queen e5 is just checkmate right in the middle of the board. But even more brutal is what was played in the game, which is bishop to e5, checking the king. There's literally almost no squares you can go to besides e4. But now, if we take a look again at the squares, the king cannot go anywhere so any check would just finish him and that's exactly what Rashid does here he plays 95 and this is just checkmate and again Rashid has eight points disadvantage in material but the, the peace coordination is just he's just honestly beautiful and also any any checkmate with the bishop you would be possible for example bishop g3 the queen here attacks the king and the king in the same way doesn't have squares and yeah this is just again a brutal way to finish the game and as you can see by the game review Rashid managed to do this again two brilliant moves according to the chess.com re game review and with a whopping 100% accuracy like this is honestly brilliant